So I am Dan Cherney from Reading Area Community College, and today I'll talk to you about a project that Patricia Majambi and I did called Using Canvas to Deliver an Asynchronous Adaptation of a Face-to-Face -face Introductory Chemistry Course. So how do we adjust a face-to-face -face lab science class uh, for either remote or asynchronous learning due to COVID-19 conditions? Lab science courses are essential for students to develop the hands-on, the feel, the judgment for completing protocols, which would give them the building blocks for future lab um, classes. But how can we, uh, as be, how can we translate these to an synchronous, uh, to an asynchronous environment, and students can still have as much experience, develop the skills to the maximum possible extent while taking this course online or remotely through Zoom. So Canvas was essential to deliver a course that was structured clearly and concisely and provided students the framework to be successful without constant announcements, video reminders from me, the professor. So, uh, we, uh, Canvas was crucial for, commu uh, for communication, announcements, emails to the entire class. Um, I used the modules page to arrange materials in Canvas logically, and the vast majority of the students did not encounter issues with the organization of the course. When you, when you put things on Canvas and then expect students to work asynchronously, they should be able to find things without sending the professor an email. And that was what I was able to do using Canvas modules. One of the um, key things I discovered was putting the same thing in two different spots because students might look for something here, but it makes sense for me to put it there. And so if I put it in the, if I put the same file in two spots and use a text header to communicate that this is the same file as located elsewhere on the modules page, that worked really well. Um, I posted many different types of content and it's structured weekly to give an experience similar to a face-to-face -face course. So we used OER Commons to select a textbook for this class. We had a book through a publisher, but it was not the best experience for myself, for the other instructors, and for students as well. So what, so what Patricia and I did was find sources on OER Commons, and we adapted them to have a custom textbook that fulfills our course competencies and presents information in the exact order in which we, were cover, which, in which we cover it. Previously, we skipped uh, around among chapters in our textbook from a publisher because the order in which the textbook had it was, didn't make the best order for us at Reading Area Community College, and we made a textbook, so now we go right, we, we include the information the students need, nothing extraneous, and we, and we go in order through the chapters. We reordered the information, and we blended chapters from multiple sources, and we got exactly what we needed to fulfill the course competencies, and in the last bullet point down here, I do have to admit that this takes advantage of the fact that introductory chemistry is a pretty much defined set of concepts and theories for students to understand before they move on to more advanced classes and through multiple paths in college. We talk about things that were uh, discovered decades, if not 100 plus years ago. So the information is not going to change factually. The types of math problems, 
the presented workflow for solving the problem is going to change, but the facts aren't going to change often. So we um, there are four main sources that we used for our custom textbook. We, um, we used uh, two sources from OER Commons, North Essex Community College in Massachusetts, and the Sailor Foundation. And yes, this was published uh, 10 years ago, but like I said before, introductory chemistry doesn't change. The, the foundation, the fundamentals are sound and rigid. Um, LibreText Chemistry and OpenStax Chemistry, we also use that for additional sources and additional content. And we made this final product. 12 custom chapters. We made it uh, free online through a series of PDFs in Canvas. <clears throat> Students um, might also want uh, a hard uh, physical copy. So we worked with the campus bookstore to provide sort of shrink wrapped loose leaf three hole punched version of this book uh, for about $40, which covers the basic costs to make, sell, and distrib distribute and ship the book. Due to COVID-19, we do ship books to students' houses if they were not comfortable with coming to campus last year. We also have a lab manual, and that is solely available on Canvas. So let me take you to our Canvas page. So you see this list of modules here. Each module in the book is... A, each, each chapter in the book is a module, and each lab session is a module. At the top, we have a welcome. Um, I use discussion boards a lot during the class, because students can just ask quick questions about what's the answer to problem 27, where is um, this bit of information in the book. Most often, they just email me, and I answer it. The book is available right here, so Spring 2021 Textbook as PDF Files. And so, this is free. The students can download the PDF, and if they need to print like a table on one page out of 15, 18, 24 pages, they can do that. They can print as much or as little as they want. For the lab files, let me go to lab session eight here. We have the PDF of the lab protocol available as well. And the data, and there is also a data sheet down here where students would, would uh, download a Word file and type their answers and re-upload it to this page for me to grade. So I center the course on modules. Since I had all the modules condensed, there's also exams given here, and, um, and I will return to these shortly. So this is for flexibility. Stu um, students might, might, might prefer to uh, mark up a, a, P, a, a PDF file in an app on a tablet or on a computer. And we have to understand that students are going through potentially tough financial times right now. And, and there's maybe getting over it or getting through it. And so offering fr a free choice removes the barrier of a hundred dollar or more cost for text for the textbook and the lab manual. So what we what I ended up doing to supplement the book to provide an enriching experience I, is as that I used a document camera to film myself 
discussing more complicated concepts in chemistry. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do this for the entire course. I used my judgment about what, type, what types of practice problems should I do, what um, concepts should I explain, like stoichiometry here, is in this screenshot that I took from a video. And, and the educational media staff at Rack loaned me a document camera, and I made and I made the content at home. Um, I uploaded to Canvas Studio, and I linked and I embedded the videos in content pages. And I will show you some examples of those. So. When you start in uh, in Chemistry 120 at RAC, you may not know how to use a calculator. We provide a uh, we we have a calculator that is a recommended um, resource at the bookstore. So I, I I start by using the document camera to show students how to use their calculators in the different ways that we will do in Chemistry 120. And I, uh, we have a TI-30X2S in the bookstore. If a student does not have a calculator when they register, they can purchase this. And I also used uh, the, uh, the TI-83 Plus model for the, the, the TI-80 and 90 series graphing calculators from Texas Instruments. So I start with this, and then I basically use markers and um, printer paper to draw problems to do these short 10 maybe up, upwards of 20 in this case 10 15 minute videos to get students over the, the sort of humps in the information to make sure they they are grounded so they can move on to the next section grounded next section and we progress through the course in that way So, I have the I, I I linked two videos here to show, and I I did this because if a student is authentic is logged in to their rack account and to um to access the course on Canvas, they can click these links and be taken to the page. So I, I like to embed these URLs in the PowerPoint so students can watch them. But another point is that um, I didn't have to like make a whole thing, make a whole course from scratch. There are great items on YouTube already and they can supplement so I don't have to, as I say, reinvent the wheel here, make all these videos from scratch. I don't like to hear myself talk more than my any more than my students do. So if I can bring in other people, they uh, other people and their channels on YouTube, the, um, the students can see different ways the same idea is explained. And if I open this link here. What you will see is a supplement uh, to a lab exercise done in the course. So I, instead of making these videos myself, I have three different sources that are all cited, and I would on it, and I will play the video in class, or sometimes just play a section of it, and I tell the students what you should get out of this, and. Sometimes I will also point them to specific portions of the video. Like for the, for example, this video is about 15 minutes. I say start around seven so you can see how the creator explains the calculations involved in this experimental procedure. You don't have to watch her do it, but do watch her do the math to interpret the experiment.
So how to give exams through Canvas. Normally I would just hand out a packet of papers and students would take them in the classroom. Um, so in, um, I had to do some trial and error essentially. I had to take the question as I have it on the, on the Word file and I adapted it to Canvas. I had to go through like a couple different trial and error steps. Like, is, is this a drop, multiple drop downs question, which substituted for fill in the blanks? Or when, when an answer could have been, could, could be one of a short series of numbers. Lots of math calculation questions were, were formatted as essay questions. And students would type their work into the, the essay question answer box for partial credit if they got the answer wrong. When students have to, when students are presented with this question, I gave them a prompt. I type my answer is blank because I need to distinguish what their final answer is. For example, if an answer is 10, 20, 30, or 40, those numbers could be, lo uh, could be lost in the calculations, and so I needed to put that little cue in there for the students to help me help them with their grades. So I also provided a content page telling the students you need to have this, this, and this, and um, including tables from the textbook, in addition to the usual um, exam standbys of a calculator, strap paper, and something to write with. For multiple choice, true, false, uh, drop down menu questions, since those were automatically graded by Canvas, I can turn I can turn around completely graded exams within two or three days, versus maybe four or five when I would have to grade the whole thing manually. One point about um, asynchronous classes is classes is that they may be not maybe the only option for students who work 40 hours a week work first shift second shift and so exams were um spaced out over a friday and saturday so to accommodate as many different work schedules as was reasonable and very 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 rarely did a student need to email me to have the window for the exam open sooner or open later, often because they had a family obligation. So now the lab. The lab protocols were modified from our original publisher source to avoid copyrights. We also went online, found um, webs there are a few good websites that have uh, sufficiently detailed protocols. And so this is all open source, free to use online, and we adapted them to fulfill the original course competencies. So lab protocol files and data sheets are available for download from the Canvas modules page. And so we have files, ass assignments, and, and resources in each module. We have a PDF file for the protocol, a discussion board to ask questions, a pre-lab quiz to test if the students have come to the lab session prepared, if this was face-to-face -face or given remotely through Zoom. For an asynchronous class, I have it do six hours before the, 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 uh, the post-lab work the students would turn in after completing the assignment in person. That's to facilitate students completing the assignments in the correct prescribed order. So how do you recreate a collaborative lab experience for an online course? If um, we were able to have a face-to-face -face class, we would be in this room, students would be working in groups of three or four, Students have to learn how to delegate, how to work productively, not just, you know, sit on and sit and interact with their phone while the rest of their group does the experiment. So how can this experience be replicated on Canvas? 
Um, I let students form their own lab groups. So there is a discussion forum about if you want to choose to be in a lab group. And I took the content page here and uh, just did a screen capture. So basically, students can post their names, their availabilities around work and family, and preferred methods of communication like Zoom, Google Meet, uh, FaceTime, things like that. And once a group um, is assembled and they get the, the, the details ironed out on Canvas, I they communicate to me. I, I use the group set feature available through the people page in the navigate in the course navigation bar. And I assign them assign them their own discussion section and little page where they can go by themselves to talk and communicate, sh uh, share files, uh, however they want to do this. Is this popular? No. Is it, this has, it has not picked up yet. I, um, what I found is that students, they have the expectation that this is an online course, so they're going to work by themselves. And if they do form groups, what I found is that sporadically, they just go to other, they just go to other people's houses. And so I, I see it in my, in, in my remote classes, uh, two people are logged into Zoom and they are sitting in the exact same room. So, the workflow for videos to substitute for the in-person lab experience. I complete the hands-on portions of labs with my videos. I supplement them with the YouTube content. And so, uh, I do this sometimes because if students aren't sure of what they see from me doing it, they can go to someplace else and see the same experiment done slightly differently. Uh, since students don't have act, aren't recording these numbers in person, I give them example data values that would allow accurate, cal accurate calculations to be done. These are not numbers chosen at random. These are numbers that, will, when used in the mathematical operations required, they would produce the, the desired outcome. Um, the assessments, the pre-lab and post-lab quizzes submitted through Canvas, and upload Word files as well uh, for the data sheets. They download the data file, uh, fill, type their work into the Word file, and upload it back to Canvas. And coming this fall, we are preparing lab kits for at-home labs. Because one of the inherent challenges in balancing face-to-face -face remote and online, edu and online education is that you don't want to make one format significantly easier than the other. And so lab kits, we hope, would normalize the experience. So how did I do this? I made a, um, a YouTube account, and it is unlisted on uh, a Google and YouTube because it's the intellectual property of Reading Area Community College. And so in the lab protocols, I just put the, I put the YouTube URLs into the files, and the students watch the videos directly um, through uh, by clicking the link in the protocol PDF files. How, um, how would this look? I have my channel here. It's, um, we put the, the department's name on it. I upload these videos here. They're normal, they're nominally less than five minutes because we don't wait for things to boil or heat up. We just, we cut straight to the key observations. We normally have three hours for a lab period, and you don't want the students to watch three, uh, three hours worth of lab videos. So it's just straight to the point. It provides the students with the numbers or the visual observations they need to complete the lab. And also, I used playlists. When I have a lot of similar videos that are short, I 
um, group them into a playlist, and I link the playlist in the lab protocol. You can see this playlist has, has almost 200 views, and the analytics available on YouTube allows me to see what percentage of students use proper computers versus uh, tablets versus phones to watch my videos. It's very interesting and very useful. So we kept the same format for the labs. We just used the online resources to fit the labs into the new format. We did not change anything about the format. So when putting the assessments on Canvas, a, cru um, a crucial thing is to use the text headers. This is a post-lab quiz. And the students saw uh, um, the, the format is, is, is text, no question, when you build quizzes on Canvas. And so I give them a little preamble to, sh to tell them what's happening, and that the, what's happening and that the next couple questions are all linked. And as you can see, question four, five, and six are all linked. I took a multi-part question and just subdivided it. And I repeat information again so students can have it and be reminded of that as they complete the question. It, uh, the correct answer to the question four feeds into five, and once you get five, you can do one quick calculation to select your answer in a multiple choice format. You can see these are two numerical answer questions and finish up with a multiple choice question. So what did I learn from doing this? I learned the optimal balance of making new content versus repurposing what's already out there. Um, this is something that if you want, to, if you embark on the same type of uh, task, it's trial and error. And also communication is trial and error. As an instructor, we know where the information is because we build the Canvas pages. Students may not be that uh, familiar with it, or they may think, th think through things differently. And if using text headers, you, uh, just typing that more words in the content pages allow students to work asynchronously without frequent nudges, reminders about, hey, this file is located here, or download this file from this page, and adapting deadlines and assignment windows. Asynchronous online education is different than having students come to a, come to a campus classroom and interact together from a set time to a set time on a set day each week. And so it, um, assignment deadlines, uh, windows for length of time to take the assignment all need to be adjusted and figured out empirically. I did not uh, I did not start with the uh, content that content or the formatting I have now. Students liked the uh, feedback about assignments for exams. So what I did for exams was I gave them an opportunity to upload files showing their work for math problems. I labeled the assignment as not counting towards the final exam. I mean final grade, excuse me. So like for exam one here, upload file showing your work for math problems. So this is a file upload where students can upload J, um, JPEGs, Word files, PDFs, however it works for them. And for some of the math problems that we cover in the course, it's just not feasible or uh, a good use of time to type everything into an essay question box. So students can upload their work here. I, 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 I checked the box for the assignment does not count towards the final grade because they would be writing this on a paper exam anyway. And 
this allows me to give partial credit, give students feedback if they just um, made, made one error in the problem and then that cascaded through subsequent steps. I can give more detailed feedback to help them. As you can see, out of 27 students, this was not popular, just like the forming the lab group discussion board. Students are, um, I, I, I've, ne I've never gotten more than 10 students submit submitting their work for exams. And I offer them partial credit, but it just hasn't caught on yet. And that's available for all exams. It's, uh, this starts, this has the same availability window as the exam proper. Um, my lab and document camera videos. So having the videos of me talking to explain more difficult portions of the class worked really well, and students liked the, um, the textbook and lab manual that was on Canvas. Since students were not coming to can a campus, um, and they, they could have it, they could have everything they need downloaded to their device. Uh, feedback, I just put, um, so uh, RAC distributes uh, um, course evaluations through Canvas each semester, and I just put two um, uh, bits of feedback here. So um, I, 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 I did not get 100% response rate, but you can see the students were, um, very pleased with how the course worked. And these two examples, and there are other types of questions as well. Improvements. Um, I'm going to adjust the math format, the numerical answer versus essay questions. From experience, some questions need to be switched um, from numerical to essay, others need to be switched in the reverse direction. That's just something I've picked up as I've seen more students go through these assignments. Um, I do get re I did get requests this semester for more uh, for more materials posted to, to the modules. I did put that in, and I'll put some more in uh, before the fall. And lab kits. So. Um, well, you, you will provide lab kits that will be shipped to the students' home if they don't feel like coming to camp, campus to pick them up. And Patricia and I could not have done this by ourselves. Ryan Matz was behind the camera for, um, for me completing the lab, exercise, the lab exercises. Elena Vidov is the, the lab assistant. She prepares all the materials. Um, and she got everything set up so I could come in and make my videos and the students for doing all these things and going through trial and error with me once we switch to the asynchronous format. And with that, I thank you for your time and I hope you enjoyed this virtual Canvas Magic Conference.